marriages without kids are happier than marriages with kids. Now, studies have been done. Kids for sure diminish your overall life satisfaction. Our degenerate culture is now telling us you'll have no kids and you'll be happy about it. What kinds of people are dissatisfied with their kids? Right. Your hypothesis you just suggested is if you're unhealthy, yes. If you're struggling with other aspects in your life, yes. putting kids on top of that might make yes. things worse. Yes. But if you seem to have a lovely home, yeah. <laughs> the financial ability, you know, all those good things, then maybe adding kids is just a, a beautiful thing that you can handle. Okay. Hi, David. Hey, Mike. Hello. Okay. Hello. On today's video, we are going to be reviewing a JP Reacts video about the topic of having children, meaning in life, happiness and where those two ideas coincide. I think you'll find it helpful. There's a lot of interesting dynamics playing out in this video, mm -hmm. a little bit of life purpose, happiness, a little bit of uh, culture war stuff, a little bit of bias, and how we interpret quote unquote credible research, or how do we, I guess, reflect upon things that matter to us and that we need to be talking about. Would you add anything awesome. to that? No, I think that's a, that's a great, summary um i haven't fully seen this video yet you mentioned a, a bit about it to me so i'm interested to see what what jp has to say and what issues come up okay and and just as a slight feedback i guess or, or so jp as i understand is a comedian mm. and for many years prior to COVID, i enjoyed his comedy quite a bit but i think my perspective is once COVID happened and the whole culture war really ignited and all kinds of debates happened. I think he got a little bit, I think what they call audience capture. So he went down a bit of a tunnel mm. or, or my perspective is that he got sucked into that a little bit. And um, as you know, if you've watched our other videos, we do our best to acknowledge where and when we do get caught up in our own biases and how that is uh, a struggle. And I think we believe that being able to identify your biases and call ourselves out is important, right? And we need Huge. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what we're trying to contribute to these conversations. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, so just before we jump to the video, Mike, you're saying JP sort of lost his nuance, lost. Well, his ability he went to... from being a comedian to a social commentary person. And I think he's of... propagating like only one perspective yeah, yeah, at the expense so. yeah. of balance and yeah. thinking critically about one's own views. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We are going to play the video and then we will pause it when we want to interject. Okay. I have a prediction that marriages without kids are happier than marriages with kids. Now, studies have been done. Kids for sure diminish your overall life satisfaction. Our degenerate culture is now telling us you'll have no kids and you'll be happy about it. Welcome back to the JP Reacts channel, my beautiful freedom loving friend, where we like to call out the lies, hypocrisy, and corruption of tyrants and Satan. Shine the light of awareness on woke absurdities. Okay. <laughs> Again, a lot was said in that sentence. Okay. Okay. And I think it's important for us just to, I don't know, acknowledge perhaps what he's just saying, right? So he, uh, from my perspective, he's already putting himself in a box or, or separating himself from his opposing viewpoints, mm. which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Right. But mm. he, he just sort of these tropes of like freedom, loving this. And like, I'm the sort of like, I have the moral high ground here. That's what I get from right. that a little bit. And so part of me reacts to that a little bit. And so already you're yeah. sort of off put a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he mentioned our culturally degenerate society. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, I just maybe. So there's some elitism yeah. that maybe not. Yeah. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is in me. And it, do, it doesn't even mean that it's wrong. Okay. I'm just trying to be honest about how I'm interpreting what he's saying. Cause right. as I mentioned before, generally speaking, he's a really funny guy, right? And yeah. he, his no, videos, the first 30 and, seconds have been so far at least entertaining. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And many of his skits are actually quite funny. Okay. Um, and he's good at po poking holes at things. But um, in the context of this video, I think following his bias perspective is important. And he just kind of put himself in a lane just with that uh, intro. Right. Okay. Okay. 
amongst uh, pop culture that's infected with something that uh, the path to happiness is having no kids. The most fulfilling, loving thing you can do, that's not going to make you happy. <laughs> It'll interfere with your ability to go get caramel mocha lattes at Starbucks and your ability to make money. And we know those things can definitely make you happy, but love and human connection, that can't make you happy. So no kids for you is our sincerest recommendation. That almost sounds like it comes from Satan. It wants to stop human life from breeding and stop loving connections. That's weird. With that said, I recently came across a clip from a guy who I really respect, Tom Bilyeu. He's the founder of Quest Nutrition. He later sold that for mega bucks. And you can see Tom's Instagram bio, uh, bio here. Two million followers. He's got his Impact Theory podcast, which is all about self-growth. I really respect him and a lot of material, but on a recent podcast, I think it was the Iced Coffee podcast, he had some rather shocking views about having kids, better said, not having kids, so you can be happy, which I very much disagree with. I'll share my experience along the way, but first, let's take a look at what a self-growth dude Tom Bilyeu had to say about having kids. Which, by the way, the comments, which we're going to take a look at after the video, are uh, rather unsupportive of Tom's view. <laughs> They're pretty hilarious and maybe accurate. Let's take a look. I have a prediction that marriages without kids are happier than marriages with kids. Now, studies have been done. Kids for sure diminish your overall life satisfaction. Wow. Those sound like World Economic Forum studies. Studies show that having kids diminish your... Okay. Yeah. Studies. So those sound like World Economic Forum studies. Mm -hmm. so he's present... So uh, this is where I get rubbed a bit off, um, is he starts off with a video saying he's a freedom-loving truth seeking whatever kind of idea i don't think he actually said truth seeking although calling out the woke hypocrisy etc mm. but here's a situation where he's claiming to have the truth and then he's just labeling research or studies as some conspiracy theory from the world economic forum and i just like i don't think that's helpful and i don't think that leads to any conversation or insight into what he's trying to point out I don't know if I'm making sense. I think I am. Yeah. No, but, you're not. You're not. If Mike, if what you're saying, you're not. You're not. You ha you don't like how he's packaging and framing this conversation. Yeah. He could have framed it as, "Here's this interesting perspective. Let's try to first understand what Tom Bilyeu is saying, and then try to figure out is this idea, this argument he has about life satisfaction and having kids." True. Right. 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 And he's sort of attaching. I mean, in part. We need to be fair to JP. Like it's on yes, YouTube. We do. He's we do. We engaged do. in trying to get clicks and views yeah, sure. and all that stuff. So yeah. Um, if this was a graduate seminar at you know University of Toronto, the tone might be slightly different. Sure. Yeah, you're right. That the, the framing has also all put me off. Like, how serious is his intellectual engagement yes, going to yes, be? Yes, yes. Maybe it is, and we shouldn't. Maybe, we sh maybe. we shouldn't also not put him in a box. Yeah. He's, agreed. Agreed. If I could just comment on one thing Please. that Bill yeah. has said. Um, so JP's rubbing you the wrong way. Not, yeah, just the, the way he's framing it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm already, I got triggered, but yeah. intellectually triggered by, I think Bill has said kids for sure diminish life satisfaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I agree with you on that too. Yeah. The for yeah. sure, it might be true, but we know that science, especially psychological research is so challenging to do it is so often flawed there's the sort of the p hacking crisis that yep. uh made a lot of people question findings published in psych in, you know peer-reviewed psychological journals yep. uh, academic journals so Can you just so just explain briefly oh. p hacking to people because okay so okay p hacking involves the um manipulation of one's data and the use of certain statistical tools in order to get the result that you want to get right. to publish your paper. Right. So it's unethical, basically. It's it's often not done for obvious unethical reasons. It's not really the same as cheating. Okay. okay. But it's it's sort of like the reporting of certain findings but not others. Right. The right. the construction of a data set in a certain way to bias it, even sometimes unknowingly. In my dissertation, unknowingly I engaged in p hacking. It's sort of what is done okay. um, 
And how did you want to, you're finding ways to support a a, a hypothesis. Right, 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 right. Um, And you're doing all these different tests. And if you just statistical tests, and if you just report the ones that support your perspective, and that goes into your article, but you don't report all the other stuff okay, that doesn't okay. give you the result, then yeah. that would be considered a form of PI. Okay. Okay. So back to Tom Bill, you saying research sure. says, and you're For pointing sure. out the problems in psychological research, which are very real and difficult. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's, so there's two issues. One, the field of psychology itself has gone through incredible controversies about whether their findings are yeah. legit, reliable, yeah. Yeah. trustworthy, right? The idea that if you stand up straight, this was the first issue. Um, I can't remember who it was. A Harvard professor said, "If you if you bo- body posture and mood have a are sort of has a, have a causal relationship, mm-hmm. people then replicated that study and found that no, if you it it, it it that relationship doesn't exist. So body posture and mood aren't related causally. Mm-hmm. So that started a whole chain of uh, of events um, uh, that." changed how psychological research has okay. been done but the, the second thing is not only is psychology as a field uh having concerns about the validity of their findings that are being published but also the nature of science especially in the social sciences is inherently uncertain like a definition of science requires us to say uncertainty is baked in right to the method it's not it's a it's a tool used f- for us to keep our biases in check as much as humanly possible um, it's a tool used to seek truth, to test perspectives. It is not infallible. It doesn't, if you publish one paper or a series of paper, it doesn't guarantee that that thing is true. Um, so anyone, I get my backup when anyone says, oh, fo-, for example, follow the science, which in other words, follow the inherent uncertainty um, that is part of the exploration of really complex social phenomena, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like, but in you know during covid follow the science was don't disagree with me because this is what this study said but that's not how research is done and if you ever look at a conclusion of a of a properly done scientific paper they always say more research needs to be done these are the limitations of our data right. um these are things we don't know so anything anyone who for me says for sure when dealing with a complicated question about how humans think and feel I or it or it's just to me. I don't know Tom Bilyeu enough yeah, other than the ten yeah. seconds I've heard him. Maybe he has more, uh, you know, a deeper understanding of some of this stuff, and I'm sure he does. But at least the for sure has already thrown me off. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you know, if he's saying likelihood is a good chance, research. He he he, he did say research yeah. suggests. Right. If you suggest something, you're not saying it definitely is. You're just saying, hey, maybe there's good reason to believe X. Right. But right, we don't right, fully right. know. So right. that's my, that would be my worry. Sorry. Was that a, no, that was go great. off there. No, it was amazing. I and, that. I'm not and, sure what it <laughs> also, I think it reveals the limitations of videos, social media, c- quick clips. Yeah. Which is part of what we're trying to do here, right? Is just have more conversations about these things. Yeah. And, but and you want to be certain you have to, you know, prove your perspective as opposed to say, there's some good reasons to think that I might be right. right but right. also right. I'm not fully sure. Right. Okay. That's a more respectable view in my opinion okay let's see back to jp yeah yeah tom text tom does not have kids so his reference point is he probably loves his life he's got mega bucks he does whatever he wants he's also fulfilling a purpose he helps other people he gets good positive messages out there so i don't blame him for saying to my life is good my life might be different and therefore it might be worse if i had kids but i can tell you from my experience having my beautiful son by far the most satisfying thing i've ever done in life and you know what the work that i do the work that i was doing before i had a kid so fulfilling i was very i was kind of like in tom's pivot position i had a very happy life before I had a child, a pretty satisfied life. But guess what? My life satisfaction and happiness only escalated. Before we see the rest of Tom's clip, I'll tell you this. I think it's easy for a person who has a happy life to theorize, well, I'm happy now, therefore when I have kids, I might be less happy. Here's why I think they think that. Because I thought it. It's because our minds can measure what we'll lose. Our minds can't measure what we're going to gain. Our minds can measure what we'll lose, but they can't measure what we're going to gain. You Okay, sorry. I have to pause there for a second. So, and maybe I was going to pause because he, he goes on to say something else about that. But there's an example of him citing psychological research mm-hmm. that 
um, you know, the in Kahneman actually, who is also responsible for some of the happiness research, mm. really popularized this idea of we loss aversion. That's the word I'm looking yeah. for. So he's what he's yeah. describing psychologically is called loss aversion, mm. right? We'd rather hold on to five dollars than risk the five and get ten, and that's what he's referring to. So this is just a bit another one of those sort of. I don't know if it's purposeful ignorance or purposely contradicting himself. I don't believe these studies, they're World Economic Forum studies on children's happiness. But then he goes on to cite or, or to reference what he thinks is true, which all basically comes from the same research and research people that contribute to the thing before he was contradicting. So, I, yeah. So, so yeah, there's the, Mike, you're saying there's like this chair, like JP's engaged in sort of the cherry picking of like, well, this literature in psychology supports my yes. perspective. So I'm going to agree with it and I'm going to adopt it and, and not really challenge it. But if this literature challenges something central to my life. Yes. I'm going to belittle it, consider yeah. it culturally yeah. degenerate, yeah. world yeah. economic form, conspiracy theorizing, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really good point. So it's yeah. how we, we just attach ourselves to things that validate us and push yeah. aside yeah. and delegitimize those that don't. The other thing so far that JP is doing is he's saying, so if you go back to Tom's claim, he's yeah. like studies show. Right, okay. Right. So forget his language about the for sureness. Yeah. Studies show these studies. If you sort of look at some of the citations, if you do a quick like Google scholar search of like what this research is, it's like large surveys. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, and overall, the proportion of people might be like, yeah, I'm less satisfied, but not everyone. So JP is saying this research can't be valid. This perspective, Tom's argument can't be valid because my experience is different. But JP might be an outlier. Like, yeah, like yeah, his, yeah, yeah, his yeah, experience yeah. might be different. He might have thought about things slightly differently. Um, his his relationship with his wife might be different. The support network he might have might be different, all impacting his the, subjective the, the, experience. Yeah, his own personal experience yeah. with having kids, which actually might be amazing. His kids might be healthy and yeah, awesome yeah, right. and yeah, super yeah, yeah. fun and yeah, you yeah. know, and just making things easy. And so that's so it's not really a response to Tom. Right. It's just saying, Hey, I'm I've done well. So you you clearly have to be wrong. But <laughs> right, what about right. all the other people who might have had kids yeah. and they're miserable as a result? Yeah. We would need to go into the studies themselves that Tom suggests to figure yes. out, okay, is this something that's uh, a perspective we ought to, you know, that, that gets us closer to truth? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. And I think to give JP some credit here too, mm -hmm. he's obviously very fit. <laughs> he's very healthy physically, right? So his base point of well-being and sanity is already really strong and he's an outlier in that context in a sense right C compared to the normal person who might suffer more or struggle more he's obviously a very competent healthy hard-working guy uh, so he has that going for him too so it's such a good point and I, I just wrote down the word confounding so <laughs> right. if you have like confounding variables okay so what kinds of people are dissatisfied with their kids right your hypothesis you just suggested is if you're unhealthy yes if you're struggling with other aspects in your life yes. putting kids on top of that yes. might make your might make yes. things worse yes. but if you seem to have a lovely home yeah <laughs> the financial ability to yeah. make youtube yeah. videos yeah. Yeah. and not yeah. be sitting at a desk from nine to six or nine to five uh, like you said, you know, all those good things Then maybe adding kids is just a, a beautiful thing that you can handle. There's challenges, but wow, this is such an enriching aspect, you know, an enriching thing in my life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as opposed to kids adding to an already stressful, difficult yeah, existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Keep going. Yeah. You know, my life is all about me. Cool. Like there's a lot of that, that you will lose when you have a kid, especially if you're a good parent attending to your child and not just outsourcing it to someone else, you will lose things. Therefore, the mind can just automatically say, well, I'm going to be less happy because I'm looking at all these things that I like that make me happy. I'll, I'll lose them. But our minds aren't measuring the unknown. Okay. So there's another problem with JP's critique of Tom's. So they're talking about different time periods, right? Tom's article, Tom's prediction is after how satisfied the the individuals are after having kids. Mm -hmm. JP is saying you think you're going to be unhappy, but don't worry it's going to turn out differently. You're right. just thinking you're just saying you're going to be unhappy. Yeah. Because you think you are because we think in terms of loss, not right, in terms right, of gains. Right, right, right. But the research on having kids and satisfaction that I think Tom is mentioning is about what happens to those individuals after they've had kids, right. not how do they think about yes, yes, having kids. Yes, so they're yes. sort of talking past one another yep, right now. Yeah. 
And and I think we pointed it out briefly, but also to give Tom some credit here, yeah. we're literally reacting to a 30 second clip that was put together for YouTube shorts yes. to get clicks and whatever else. So that's all happening here. And that's also what we're trying to bring people's attention to is, yeah. is to slow down and try to realize that our information ecosystem is such a mess right now. Yeah. And to interpret these things, it really does take some wisdom and patience perhaps. Yeah. Something like and that. humility and, yeah. and being okay. Like Mike, I think we should make a commitment to ourselves. Like, let's be okay not knowing the answer after our conversation. Like, yes, yes, and yes. saying like, you know, maybe in, you know, we're both dads. In ten years from now, we'll have another YouTube. We'll have yeah, 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 else. yeah, but yeah. Like, are we? Are we? Like, what happened yeah, here? Yeah, is this yeah. a, was this sure, a right sure, choice? Sure. Um, we don't know the answer. We're no. we're trying to figure this one out. Okay, back to JP yeah. here. Fine. Then prior to having a child. Let's hear more from Tom. It might come back like when you're in your 60s, but from like the time you have your kid until after all of them have left the house for a significant period of time, it diminishes your overall sense of well-being. So I don't believe these studies, by the way. They do sound like World Economic Forum, Bill Gates. Man. Okay, sorry. Again, that I know we talked about that. We belabored that point a little bit, but there's another example of him just doing what Tom's doing and, or doing what he's claiming Tom is doing, just sort of suggesting just because people say something doesn't mean it's true. Mm. What's wrong with Tom for citing this? And then he just claims that he can discredit this because it's some part of some Bill Gates World Economic Forum conspiracy, which is is ridiculous and not helpful. It's not helpful when we start doing that in terms of our interpretation of reality. It's ridiculous and unhelpful, especially when it's a, just a thrown out, unsubstantiated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, criticism it's like the hand waving like oh yeah you're just citing the sources that agree with you and you're not yeah. intellectually serious and, yeah 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 this is what the establishment says like okay make those arguments yeah. right we live in a free society these arguments are at least you know allowed yeah permissible yeah what's the evidence in support of that critique like jp would have i mean granted we cut him off every single time so maybe he can't <laughs> defend himself but like if he doesn't defend that then it's just sort of like this hand waving, yes, yes, not yes. intellectually serious engagement. If he says these are the reasons why I said that, this is why I link these studies to World Economic Forum thinking, um, then I'm more open to yeah. oh, okay, maybe there's something here as opposed to just biases playing out and leading us to do things that push yeah. other challenging perspectives away because we don't want to handle being told that we're wrong. Yeah, yeah, and in. Maybe also in credit to him, he's he's a very popular guy. He's got a huge following. Mm. We need people like him to engage in the gray area between his biases and beliefs and other people's biases and beliefs and try to find some middle ground. That's yeah. the whole point of this culture war madness is that we're just so polarized. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're not meeting in the middle. And it's just too easy to categorize people and then brush them off as stupid or yes. not worth uh, our attention. Or yeah. And I, just before, just yeah. two seconds, um, neither one of our arguments so far, I hope, has been suggesting that Tom uh, or JP are, are, are liars, stupid. Yeah, I hope, um, I hope not. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just sort of like we're, we have a high intellectual standard yeah. and things you say should be assessed critically and we're trying to aspire to like a, a healthier form of political yeah, engagement yes yes, yes so yes, yes. in no ways are these personal attacks on these things no both no, both are no, incredibly no. smart far more successful than i will ever ever <laughs> yes, ever be yes. so all credit to them sure but yeah our job here is to say well does this make sense how can we improve upon that is that something we want to repeat yeah if so why if not why not that kind of thing yeah all right so having kids is the ultimate act of sacrifice. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Amazing. And I hope people... By the way, I would agree having kids is the ultimate act of sacrifice. My experience in life is the more I sacrifice towards something, the more satisfied and happy I am. Think about earning a first place trophy by not earning it. You made no sacrifices. It's just like millennial Gen Z situation where, cool, you show up, you're a glob of you get a first place trophy. You feel no satisfaction around that because you made no sacrifice for it. But if you work your butt off, 
you sacrifice, you go through physical pain and training, you sacrifice your time dedicated to training in this endeavor, and you earn the first place trophy only through the pathway of your sacrifice, how much greater is your satisfaction? I would dare say, sacrifice for a worthy purpose. You want to stop it there? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like so excited. There's yeah, so yeah, many yeah, interesting yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this was, okay. So like JP's argument is an interesting one. More sacrifice equals to more well-being, more happiness, more sense of purpose, whatever yeah. the outcome is. Yeah. He's using a sports analogy where there's a discrete outcome. Like you work incredibly hard and you win your tennis match. Right. And you have that thing that the, the, the period of struggle ends and culminates with a positive outcome. The thing with parenting is there's no end. It's not a short term training session, right? It's a daily grind where you never really know where your kids are going to end up because we might as parents be dead by then. Yeah. So it's not a sport. It's sure, not the same sure. kind of sack sacrifice because there's no outcome yeah okay. other than yeah, the, yeah. the maybe those little moments where like wow my kid is 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 being great at you know she's so polite she's right. really nice she's yeah. really enthusiastic about her life but those are going to be fleeting moments yeah i think i'm not sure the sports analogy may i wonder how jp would respond to that or mike what you think of this but i'm not sure the sports analogy where there's a discrete end to that sequencing of sacrifice yes is the right one to make sense of parenting which seems to be like a lifelong grinding marathon that we die at the at a point where we're not really sure if we're successful or not yeah like by the time our kids are in therapy <laughs> we're are how you know how deep in the earth are we yeah i don't know um i mean maybe maybe no i think yeah. maybe just the idea of sacrifice and putting perhaps a uh, higher order needs or goals ahead of our impulsive desires in the moment is generally a good thing. So maybe as a grander context, that is true. And I agree with him. Although maybe, yeah, as you say, the sport, maybe he's just trying to use an analogy. He's reacting to a video, who knows, but there is something about this idea of sacrifice and to his, to give him credit, uh, we do seem to be in a culture, uh, that promotes impulsive hedonic pleasure seeking behaviors. Yes. And and sacrifice or delayed gratification is not a virtue right now, uh, although it has historically been one. There, there's totally, yeah. Um, but there's also like certain kinds of sacrifice, like, okay, so you joined the military, huge sacrifice. Yeah. Does sacrifice necessarily lead to positive well-being after? I mean, often <laughs> during, right. but you're coming home with PTSD. Hmm. That's a good point. So, so it we have to so this is what like research in this area would do maybe right, there, there exists right. but under what conditions does sacrifice lead to well-being sacrifice in and of itself can be it, you could lose your life yep. you could lose entire your like your everything that you hold dear yeah yeah you could use your your brain or your body like you yeah could, yeah the sacrifice the thing the effort the resources you're spending could be done in vain it can work Think about how much you sacrifice for something that might be unsuccessful. Yeah, so is that yeah, yeah. the kind of sacrifice that leads to positive outcome? So the question I would be interested in is under what conditions does sacrifice lead to positive right, emotions? Right, right, right. Not sacrifice, yes, of course, always sacrifice. Well, for what, when, how to do it, for how long, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, back to Tom here, I guess. I think it is the most obvious life path to go down if you want to be fulfilled. But there is another side to that coin, and it's pretty bright and sunny over on my side of the road. I would say it's <laughs> sunnier on my side of the road. But well, let's see what the comments have to say on this video clip on the Iced Coffee Hour Instagram page. These are not supportive of Tom's view. It seems that people without kids often try to justify their decision. Next comment. Absolute bullshit. Having a child has been the best thing my wife and I have ever done and will ever do. Bullshit. Without kids, your life is pointless. Yeah, I, I agree with the bullshit, but you know, your life isn't necessarily pointless without kids. Next comment. Complete BS. A lot of bullshit <laughs> in this comment section. Complete BS. Life without kids 
is empty ass life. Ian Valier uh, comments, which uh, he, I know his name. Yeah, he's a professional bodybuilder. Happened to know his name. Not having children is one of the biggest mistakes people can make. Next comment, you'll just die alone. Either your wife will die first and the other will be left to die alone in the hospital surrounded by strangers. That's what you're accepting. Next comment, I think this is BS. Just wondering, I can't find any comments that agree with his perspective. He's a Victor mm. Frankl qu quote. When a man can't find a deep sense yeah. of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. Whoa, that's actually pretty profound. But this mm. isn't just Tom Bilyeu's perspective. It is, I would dare say, a growing leftist perspective. The child-free movement. If you want to be happy, no kids for you. Just to pause there quickly. Yeah. Always bringing it's it back to the culture war kind of stuff, which... I guess as part of his thing, it's part of these reaction videos. Although again, it's reinforcing the us versus them. It's reinforcing the divide that we're trying to close. And mm -hmm. I assume JP aspires for a more, more cohesive, less crazy society. Yeah. And when you say things like that, I don't know if that helps. But right, yeah. if a if a if a if a liberal kid, yeah, if a, a leftist, whoever was or are um yeah. was watching this video would they be drawn to jp or right. would they be even if even if he's making a lot of great points worthy yeah, of consideration yeah, yeah. of course he is yeah um but would they be would that help build build bonds and build conversation or just say uh this guy's not on my team not on yeah, my team it's yeah. quite tribalistic i do admire one thing he did acknowledge there you don't have to have kids to have purpose and meaning in life. Like yeah. I like that he actually did acknowledge that. So yeah. I give him credit for that. And yeah. this idea that where I think our approach and insight can be helpful is all we're, all we need to do is just be honest about these things. Mm. So for a lot of people, they're not able to have kids and maybe that's because their body isn't working properly or yeah. not, you know, yeah. able to reproduce or, financial conditions or who knows there's all kinds of hosts of reasons as to why people can't have kids yeah. and then where i think the growth or, or a more helpful perspective would be just to be honest about that mm -hmm. instead of making up excuses as to why you can't have kids or perhaps being too shameful or feeling too mm -hmm. inadequate that you can't reproduce and then coming up with a rationalization and a justification for why you don't have kids. Right. So an example just might be, yeah, it's really sad and I wanted to have kids and I tried and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And this is my life right now. And it's great in all these other ways. Or maybe, yeah, I just don't want to have kids because I don't think I'm capable of the responsibility right. or I would rather go and do other things or who knows. But I think it's that honesty piece that's separate from, I think what we're about to see, this sort of hedonic self serving self-indulged pursuit of material or or whatever it is right right that makes sense yep all right this instagram account username child free millennial you know, all the content is posted around you know uh, asserting child free is the way to be I, I want to so just on the child free i was thinking about this a few weeks ago where so so I have a daughter yeah. and every Thursday you're about to have another kid. About, yeah, about to have another. Um, so a two year old and every Thursday um, I volunteered and I, I bring sort of food to uh, senior citizens who either way. Um, and I was just, I, I had this moment where thinking for me, no, I don't know the reason. I'm so much better off having I interactions with people who are of different ages because it, it provokes different things in my brain. So my two year old is all just like silly play just being ridiculous right and then the 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 more the senior citizens the elderly i help are you know a bit more like complaint like you know thinking about you know my regrets in life what matters to me what have I, what have i done how how should what what should my priorities be it's a bit more serious look on life mm -hmm. and i think both are so valuable so like if you're not surrounded by kids you're not going to get that play out in you i think mm -hmm. if you're not surrounded by those who are much, much, much older than you, you're not going to be able to, to, to sort of get that wisdom you need to think about what should my priorities be? Yeah, it's good. I think, right? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. the kids, so just for, for in the context of our conversation, yeah. kids I find so useful because they just want to, they, they're, I mean, yeah, they're shit disturbers. 
They can be frustrating, <laughs> annoying, but there, it's so much of what they do is play. Mm -hmm. And it actually can encourage us to, to tap into our playful yep. sides, right? And yep, you, I'm yep, sure you yep, see yep. this with your kids. So much of it is just playing, 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 playing in different ways. Some ways can be so annoying for us <laughs> if we want to get stuff done, if you want to get them to bed, if you want to get them to school. But <laughs> I find that still something that's ultimately probably in the end, maybe very, has been very useful for me as a dad that yeah. just being able to play for a few hours in my day with, with the, cause I otherwise have a serious job that stresses me out that I'm thinking about dark things. Um, and here I can just sort of like play make believe or, mm. you know, mm -hmm. like see things mm -hmm. that I would never mm -hmm. otherwise think about as much. So just that was sort of provoked by that child free, like, Oh, I don't want kids around, but kids right, are, right. right. They're all, they're yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah, maybe I'm yeah. showing my cards a tiny bit in this debate, but maybe, um, yeah. Okay. There is a kind of trendy acronym called DINKS that help justify no kids. Almost sounds like uh, we're brainwashed by the extinctionists that hate humans and want us off planet Earth, but I'm sure that's not the case because I don't know that I'm brainwashed. That's part of the brainwashing, idiot! So DINKS means double income, no kids, which implies income, double income makes us happy, Kids would make us unhappy. Cool. Do your best to find happiness in money. Do your best to, well, ignore the happiness with a kid. Nonetheless, here's someone in the dink movement. I am 34 years old and I have been married for nine years. And my husband and I decided not to have kids because one of our core values is freedom. Jacko Willink would say discipline equals freedom, not pursuing self-gratifying pleasure equals freedom. Let me explain. When my husband and I started dating, we both fell in love with how independent we were and how dedicated we were to our careers and our ambition and our purpose and our devotion to our own individual happiness. Like she's so literally on, putting a I was, facade you know, on her 24 face. when we were dating, we decided that we were not interested in having kids. But I also knew that I am very young. More on the dink life. We're dinks. We're going to be asked constantly by family, friends, and strangers when we're going to have kids. We're dinks. We're going to go to Costco and buy all the snacks we want. We're dinks. We're going to support our friends who have kids, even if we decide to never have any. We're dinks. The reminder of how unhelpful short social media clips are about complicated topics. So that lady is literally putting on the makeup, talking to her camera and like trying to man, like it drives me fucking mad because it's just so fake. It, it sort of comes from a uh, persona, it comes from a facade, it comes from an act. And so much of all of the stuff that I find difficult and annoying about these things is everyone's just acting and pretending and social media is such a disaster for the perpetuation of insincere, unhelpful conversations. So I had a, a different take. Yeah. I was like, wow, as, as frustrating as some of these, like, yeah, I was like, wow, there's brutally honest. Yeah. And I found nice. it off putting. I, like I, I actually found what I just like that. the previous yeah. person, yeah. like she was so honest. Yeah. And I, I found like it that. so That's off putting. <laughs> I found like, wait, is it like to say like, oh my, when someone says, what's the purpose of like my individual happiness, I find that it, it hit me again. So I'm just thinking about like how I'm emotionally, like, yeah. emotionally, I was like, I find that to be just it was slightly repelling. I think individual happiness is super important. I think yeah. it's it's an outcome that's a byproduct of maybe serving others as best as you can. Mm -hmm. So just that, I was like, wow, you're so honest. And it's really not a, like not an attractive perspective yeah, yeah, for me. Sure, sure. That was just in that moment. That's yeah. how I saw that. All right. Um, I wish going? you I wish it was a facade. I wish that's not a, a real thing. And I think that's probably what JP is picking up on. These self-obsessed, everything's about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. People, agreed. Yeah, and anything that gets in the way of your freedom and your money to spend on material possessions is a bad thing. Yeah, and I think there's, you know, I drank that Kool Aid. <laughs> like, I think there's something there. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, should we keep yeah. it on? Yeah. And money equals happiness implied according to him. But wait, there's more. I'm child free, and my favorite quote is, "Them kids." Sorry. Okay. There's so there's so much. <laughs> yeah. The irony is also the no kids people would not exist if their parents. So like their individual happiness <laughs> right, is predicated right, right. Right. <laughs> on someone else sacrificing for them. Yeah. So isn't our job like, okay, we've experienced incredible freedom as kids. You hit a certain age. Your job is now to partner up. Sorry, not your job. You don't have to do it. No, but no. but yeah. it's sort of a thing humans do is they start to bond with, with, uh, with someone else to give the freedom 
to someone else that they can experience for 20, 30 years until they partner up with the next person to give right. that. So these people are denying free. So JP might argue these people are now denying freedom to the kids they're not having. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah. So they yeah. Exi- their freedom is predicated on the sacrifices of others. Sure. And, and their parents. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it was in our job to pay that forward by yeah. providing our job. We provide freedom and happiness to our kid and they are kids and they will do that as, as you know, if they choose mm-hmm. to do that, mm-hmm. you know, for their offspring That's and a, so on and so on and so forth. And the generations continue. It is a great point. And I'm not sure you've ever said that. Right. <laughs> now, last year, you may have seen a very viral clip from Chelsea Handler, a day in the life of a child, a childless woman. Uh, <laughs> I almost said a day in the, the life of a childish woman, which is maybe also the case here. So we'll take a look reminiscing about Chelsea Handler's video, which, by the way, I made a rebuttal video. Uh, I was doing an appearance on Tucker Carlson's show before Fox fired him, and they had me compile a mockery of her video, The Childless Man, A Day in the Life. Show you that next. But first, let's reminisce about Chelsea Handler glorifying the life of having no kids. This is a day in the life of a childless woman. I wake up at 6 a.m. I remember that I have no kids to take to school, so I take an edible, masturbate, and go back to sleep. I wake up at 12.30 p.m. and get ready for a busy day of doing whatever the f*** I feel like. I put on my most impractical and stylish shoes since I won't be chasing a child around the grocery store. I go to my fave spot in Paris to grab a croissant. I do a meditation sesh on the plane since I have no screaming kids, allowing me all the time in the world to become enlightened. The way is she enlightened? I don't know. The weightlessness of my existence has granted me superhuman powers. I teleport myself back home. Then I get ready for a night out with whatever hot guy I met on Raya that morning. I call up a babysitter and tell her that I don't need her since I still don't have kids. Now it's time for a workout, so I hit Mount Everest for a quick climb. I invent a time machine go back in time and kill Hitler. Freeze, you bastard! It's amazing what you can do when you have this- That's not how you shoot a gun, by the way. ...as much free time. And that's a day in the life of a childless woman. Now, Chelsea Handler, I believe she's considered a comedian, so obviously she's exaggerating, but there's truth in comedy, so my guess is, even though she's exaggerating... I guess just... Maybe just so we don't run the thing for too long, but... I think JP says it, right? She is a comedian. There's probably Mm. some sort of humor to that, right? Some exaggeration to that, et cetera. But I think the reason he's playing it or a reason, or my interpretation is so many of the things she says are, what would you call it? Like the negative side of that freedom seeking behavior, right? That sounds lonely to me. I don't care how much you rationalize or justify it. Like maybe some people really like that. I don't know. Maybe I just pause the video just for the sake of it and we should continue. But yeah, what yeah, was that, your reaction to that? No, I'm like wearing two hats here. I want to be like critical of like, let's take all these arguments seriously. That video yeah. I found off, I was like, that's, I'm not interested in living. I'll be honest. I'm not interested yeah. in that kind of life yeah. for all, all the power to Chelsea Handler to do what yeah. she wants. Yeah. We live in a free society. She has that right. But. Okay. I Let's, wouldn't consider that to be like inspiring. I'm not yeah, like yeah, yeah, right yeah, now inspired. Yeah. Wow. I really yeah, want to be the yeah, best person I can yeah. be. That or raise our daughters to be like Yeah, that. no, that didn't get me. That didn't. No, <laughs> okay. no. Hello, everybody. Hello again. Hi, Dave. Hello, Mike. We're back to finish up our JP Should You Have Children video. And I guess we'll just get back right into it. Yeah. yeah. Any comments? No. No. Okay, let's 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 play him. But yours truly uh, is also a comedian. So here is my Day in the Life of a Childless Man video, which you can also find on yours truly's Instagram account. This is a day in the life of a childless man. In the morning, I wake up to the alarm of unbearable feelings of glorious loneliness. From that point, I do whatever I want because not having kids empowers me to stay an immature child myself. With my coffee, I write in my journal to remind me how the world does in fact revolve around me. At noon, I award myself 10 virtue signaling points for not having kids just like the globalists want. In the afternoon, I treat myself to red light therapy to help strengthen my narcissism at the cellular level. Then I enjoy reading about Marxism and all the benefits of destroying the nuclear family. 
So good. And before bed, I count my money and think about how it's the true source of happiness. <laughs> Those idiots with kids are missing out. I would cry myself to sleep, but I'm a man, so I repress my emotions instead. It's amazing how much meaning you can miss out on when you set your life up to make everything about you. And that's the day in the life of a childless man. Should we comment on his funny video at all, or sure. does it speak for itself? I'm, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts. I'm still formulating my thoughts. What oh, you, what, I, I just think it's funny. Reactions? I think it's funny. I think he does a good job at pointing out sort of the silliness, I guess, of or the the counter logical arguments of being childless or not having responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, being lonely is not ideal. Having no responsibility is not good, and having money for the sake of having money there's no fulfillment in that right anyway he just makes a funny joke of it all and it is in response or contrast to the chelsea handler one from mm -hmm. before right just sort of making a mockery of this attitude so i just think it's funny i think he did a good job so he's making a claim that a me 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 attitude leads you to unhappiness yes and loneliness and to crying yourself to sleep at night <laughs> but you suppress your emotions because you you're emotions. a man yeah right <laughs> that was funny yeah um right chelsea handler says i have no kids this makes me happy because i can do whatever i want whenever i want jp says it's in fact the opposite that if you have all this time on your own to do whatever you want you're actually going to feel a deep sense of loneliness even if you can you know do your red light therapy work out run after chickens read whatever you want whenever you want at the end of the day it's going to feel empty. Yes. Yeah, so yes, you will feel lonely if, or just not, it's not in alignment with what the universe created human beings to be doing something like that. It doesn't lead to fulfillment or it doesn't lead to positive emotion in a sense. I don't know. Maybe it's like hedonic pleasurable emotion, but it's nothing sustainably meaningful. Right. So anyway, maybe let's keep continue. Yeah, let's see what he says here. here. All okay. right. And mocking is how I feel. The wisdom throughout the ages is if you make your life about seeking pleasure for your own gratification, you won't find fulfillment. You'll find dopamine hits. You'll find safety, security. But that safety, security that makes you feel protected will soon imprison you. The wisdom also shares if you make your life about being of service, that is the true source of happiness. And in my life experience, that seems true to me. Before we bring in the cleanup hitter on the topic, Jordan Peterson, to hear a short clip of what he has to say about, you'll have no kids so you can be happy about it. I'll just share this. If someone doesn't want to have kids, they'll probably be a crappy parent and shouldn't have kids. But also there's some people who don't want to have kids but say something accidentally happens or they're feeling neutral, like, okay, let's go ahead and have kids. But then something beautiful awakens and comes online in their consciousness once the child is born or coming along. So I have seen cases, and for me, I, when we had my son, like, you know, conceiving him, I felt like just a little bit right of center on the topic. Like, yeah, kind of kind of open to it. Live most of my adult life saying I actually never want to have kids. Then I was like, okay, yeah, like kind of, I'm open to it. Like I'm on board. Then we had our son and like, I'm a hundred percent on board with this now. So a lot came online for myself. But when you look at a lot of these TikTokers that we saw, I would probably agree like, cool, you're living your life in a very self-centered way. You seem very dedicated to that. You probably shouldn't have kids because you probably will be a crappy parent. Now, Jordan Peterson, one of the great thinkers of our time. I think that's insightful by him. I honest too about his sort of orientation to wanting to have kids or not. And I admire that about that little take he had right there. I do think there's something going on out there that is influencing people to decide that marriage, family, etc. just isn't the right thing to do, or there's something wrong about it, or it's unhelpful. And then that's masked or that's added on to certainly with the cost of living crisis in Western society and how expensive it is and difficult. That's all super real. Although I wonder how people 
come to the conclusion, I think some people probably rationalize to themselves that there's no point in having kids. It's too expensive, whatever. Mm. Masking a deep yearning to have kids. I mean, it's wired into us. Our, our, it's wired into us to reproduce and survive. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Isn't the, the two fundamental human drives are protect the young and reproduce and eat, obviously, but th- that's implied in it. I always wanted to be a dad. So that drive was always strong in me. And I, I guess I, I don't know if I'm being ignorant or unaware, but I think it would be lovely to see that promoted and valued right now. Yeah. And maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I think it's fair to say a lot of young people are um, resisting that call. Yeah. So one thing I wonder about is like what might explain – no, I, I, I don't know like the survey data on just general interest in raising – having a family and having yeah. kids. So like maybe it's common. Let's say – you know, let's say it's declining just for the sake of this conversation. It's declining. JP seems to suggest it's declining. There's more and more people. You know, TikTok I don't think is representative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Maybe he's cherry picking. Maybe there's all these other people on TikTok and other comedians who are lauding the great things about having kids. But if it's going down, if JP's right, I'd be interested like like – why Mm -hmm. so and there's like all these different hypotheses we could think about one mike you mentioned which is economics the cost of of having a family is is overwhelming and people just can't afford it um the second might be you also mentioned this cultural so um liberal individualism has so many strengths one probably cost of it is an excessive focus on oneself and one's own well-being and and wellness um, which might undermine a commitment to service and mm-hmm. therefore raising a family. Another might be just like, we're not sure like where the world is going with climate change and all these things and whatever one's view of that is. But I wonder if some of these, you know, I wonder if that is like, you know, we've, we've had like a, a pretty weird winter here. Like, does that have some interesting effect on our biological systems mm-hmm. that then you know, that then sort of bubble up and we come up with these different rationalizations for like, oh, the reason I don't want to have kids is because I don't want to be unhappy. When in fact, I don't want to have kids because I'm not really sure where the world is going to be in 10 or 15 years. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm like worried about the future. And and like, yeah, we're both parents. Like, I think we're, we're always worried about the future, Mm -hmm, right? Like mm -hmm. what's this world going to look like? What's our society going to look like? What do the culture wars mean for our society? So I wonder what's driving some of this stuff. And to to what extent it's you know jp might argue oh it's just like the excesses of liberalism another you know someone else might say well there's actually some good reasons why people are getting worried yeah. and i wonder how we can have a productive conversation about that to understand where might these people come from where is chelsea handler really coming from yeah is it just this you know pleasure seeking or is it a legitimate concern about you know where where society is going to be at in 10 15 years when these kids grow up the other thing i wonder about is uh like just an overall like you know what's the relationship between the mental health crisis higher rates of anxiety just higher rates of general insecurity and child rearing and are wanting to have kids like if you're not a confident it's it's actually it's it's hard it's crazy hard raising a kid and mm. they expose things in you that sometimes we don't want to expose we, we don't want to exposed and you have to be sort of like confident that you can do it to have a kid right like yeah or yeah. or yeah. or yeah. And engage in those illusions that you can do it sure um so like what's the relationship between the larger mental health crisis that our society seems to be going through or maybe it's not a crisis but like there's more and more people who seem to be struggling potentially right and then that's a whole methodological problem like a bit, uh, whether to figure out if that's true or not so just putting that aside like let's say like a lot of people are indeed struggling um if you're struggling with your mental health does that mean you know do you even do you even start to entertain the idea of service i mean through aa sure right or um, anything those who are struggling with yeah. addiction it's so hard to say okay how do i start caring for someone else when you're so worried about oneself sure you now sure. often the best way to get better is to start helping others is to engage in, in service mm-hmm. acts of kindness in a committed way, but I'm wondering what, the, yeah, I'm wondering what's driving less of an interest in kids. If it's all these, some of these factors, whether it's, you know, in Indian, maybe it's like a, just a reflection or a product of a larger mental health concerns that our society has. Yeah. To raise a kid, you have to have, you have that, you have to like, you know, have boundaries, you have to have values. And if you're not really sure where you stand on some of those big questions about how to, how to live one's life, then it's hard to parent because, Indeed. Um, you know, how are you going to figure out what your kid can do and not do? And that takes some confidence. That takes a willingness to have a backbone. That's hard. That's that yeah, can yeah. Be, that can be very hard. Yeah. And, and on that last point, 
So there's a variety of reasons why perhaps people aren't wanting to have kids right now. You outlined a bunch of them. The point I think you're aiming at at the end there is, and JP may be pointing to it, is sort of, and maybe even Jordan Peterson talks about it next, I'm not sure, but it's the tension of life is easier this way, or the thought is that. Um, the, theref- sorry, yeah. This way is with no kids. Yeah. Yeah. Theref- or, or the thought of not having kids seems easier in my current circumstance right now. Therefore, the potential struggle that must happen in order to find a partner, have kids, etc., is not worth it. But I think that's wrong. I think that what JP perhaps just mentioned in himself was there was trepidation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but actually embracing the responsibility of having kids or a child elicited it or brought up in him that motivation, Mm. that sense of the universe calling him forward to be a parent and to do the things. And I think that's an intensely motivating source for many people. Mm. And I think a lot of the things we talk about are how do you accept responsibility and discomfort while knowing it's for the better. And I think that's kind of what we're aiming at here, right? There is something better on the other side through the struggle. Yeah. And I think people are, we're just in a society that's just way too tilted towards, let's take the easy way out. Right, right. So this is like the cultural ideological argument for why people don't want kids. It's, it's we live in a comfort seeking society where it's about accommodation and right. feeling good as opposed to challenging oneself. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. So as as you were talking and as JP was talking, I just re- jotted down like you this like the saying of like seek discomfort. Yeah. That like the Wim Hof. For those in the audience who might know Wim, you know, this crazy guy who goes yeah. into extreme cold, and he says it has some really powerful mental health effects. And he has this whole following of people who like seek discomfort um, as a way to seek comfort, mm. which is the irony, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you yeah. and there's like a similar logic to like the. the cold shower the cold bath Mm -hmm. right it's like Mm -hmm. five minutes or 10 minutes however you do it of discomfort but then like the rest of your day is amazing right so like with parenting it's like these moments of frustration and challenge damn it i can't do what i want or you know i can't sleep i can't get as much sleep or i have to you know take my kid here and there and deal with this and talk about logistics all the time with my wife and man it's so annoying but then in the long run, your days are just so much more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It's like un, it's like uncomfortable and frustrating, but it's from that that you get these really this like new renewed sense of like, why am I here? Why am I doing the things that I care about? What do I care about? Recalibrating some of your priorities. Yes. Um, so through that discomfort of having a kid and being a parent, your life actually becomes so much more comfortable because you just you're just more powerful you have a renewed sense of purpose i guess that that's yeah i would think be, that's more that, that would be like the, the argument yeah um there's a, there is also yeah. just the illusion of comfort so the the right. this idea yes. that if i don't have all these things to do and responsibilities to take care of then i'll feel better or something like that but it, it's, it's sort of like so a, it, yeah, yeah it's like you feel more empty you lack because you're not doing anything and like he JP talked about it in terms of dopamine hits from yeah. here or there, but it's more of like a, a hedonic treadmill, they call it, right? Yeah. It's like we're constantly seeking gratification and pleasure through things that are ultimately doomed to keep us in a pattern of seeking. Right. And like that's not like it's never helpful. enough. Yeah. It's never enough yeah. comfort. Yeah. Let's hear what he has to say about the topic with a rather combative TV show host. Most young women are taught badly that the most important thing that they'll do in their life is their career. And that's simply not true. It's not true for most people and certainly not true for most women. Feminism would disagree. (laughs) Degenerate feminism. Certainly wasn't taught that myself. I I feel like I'm doing quite well in my career, but I still have. Hold on. I I can't, I think for my own, uh, intellectual integrity just let that slide like i don't know much about feminism and i'm not pontificating on that at all but Mm -hmm. that's that's a little example of what we talked about earlier of jp just throwing out these quick tropes of like oh feminism this blah 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 like he's just discrediting this whole perspective that is deep and has been thought through and is like a huge part of our society and very important and all that stuff and he's just kind of like yeah throwing shade on it there and i just 
it's not helpful. Yeah, there's different yeah. waves of feminism, right? They'll yeah. think differently, and often feminists will disagree on, yes. on yeah. what yeah. women yeah. ought to be prioritizing. And yeah, there's a really rich debate there. So you're absolutely right. So it's yeah. not feminism. It's a very complicated term. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Ideas. So yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, and he's just sort of yeah using that trope to, yeah. to push his narrative right. there. Right. And that's not helpful, I don't think. Okay. Myself, I, I feel like I'm doing quite well in my career, but yeah. I still have pressures. Uh, people who are saying, you know, when are you actually going to see, succeed properly by having a baby? Yeah. I kind of find yeah. that slightly offensive. I'm 38. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I've got through my early 30s uh, without that, without almost luckily, mm -hmm. when I look at what my friends have to deal with, with their children, mm -hmm. I almost feel a little bit blessed. Mm -hmm. See, I think what she's seen with her friends, what they have to deal with, her mind is measuring what she would lose. Her free time, you know, I got to deal with this. But she's not comprehending what she would gain. And she would probably be a crappy mother, so I'm glad she hasn't had kids. Out of that. Yeah, Sorry. like there he goes again, right? You know, I don't, because yeah. there's points being made that are that are interesting about how we measure costs and benefits. So, yeah. that, And this goes back to something he mentioned very early in the video yeah. about yeah. our mind is wired to calculate loss but not to calculate or compute gain yeah he didn't need the next thing about she she'd be probably be yeah he has yeah, no yeah, basis yeah, to yeah, say that yeah, it, yeah i find that it's not contributing to anything i find that to be yeah and i think i wish i wasn't there i think what you and i talk about a lot and we're doing our best we're not perfect either is for we're trying to tow a bit more of a balanced line yeah here, right yeah. like we're not we're trying to stay away from these simple tropes of labeling other people or or like pigeonholing or yeah pigeonholing or just assuming simple slogans about people yeah. that aren't helpful and they don't lead us to any meaningful solutions yeah right or outcomes or yeah um trade-offs as every time i say solutions now i think of thomas Sowell. there are no solutions there's only trade-offs mm. anyhow it's just not helpful yeah. and and if we're, I think, again, what we're trying to do is help guide ourselves yeah. and others into a dialogue that's more helpful about difficult topics. No, I, yeah. I, I agree. No, it's a, it's a good reminder. I mean, it's one thing to criticize someone else for like, oh, why they say that? But we also have to, it's a good reminder for us yeah. not to engage in that kind yeah. of yeah. Yeah. labeling yeah. Of, yeah. of people on all sides of the political, cultural spectrum, wherever you stand. I think it's worth us taking those thoughts seriously and trying to figure out what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's not, everything in between. So that's a good reminder for us. Yeah. Um, to avoid that kind of thinking and, and yeah, and language. Okay, let's go. I would say that it starts to get pretty lonesome in life after 45 if you don't have a family, you know, and so it's, it's easy to consider the utility of an intense career. And, and like you have a very high quality career too, you know, it's that, that's something that marks you out from maybe from, let's say, more typical people. And maybe perhaps that's worth more of a sacrifice. But, you know, you're going to be you're going to live till you're 90 in all likelihood and it's not easy to consider the, your life across its entire span and there's something to be said for developing a very close-knit intimate community around you if you can manage it you have children and then you have grandchildren and that to me my, what i've experienced in my life although i've had a very uh, productive career and a very interesting career um, it's definitely been the case for me that my family has been more and more important to me as I've got older. And I don't think that that's an uncommon experience. I love Jordan Peterson's perspective, primarily because I agree with it. Yet it resonates with the best source of truth as I know it. And I can share from my experience, I had a fulfilling life before my son. And now with my son, my life is at least 10x more fulfilling. Has my work suffered? No, it's gotten more powerful because I now feel even more purposeful. Like my work is even more important because I'm not just doing it for myself and like, yeah, other people, cool, but I'm doing it for him. I wanna carve a better landscape future for my son. There's nothing more fulfilling for me than caring for my son, whether I'm changing a screaming baby's diaper or chasing him around the yard or tickling him or wrestling him. Here's how satisfying it has been for me to be with my son. I have on two occasions turned down rides on President Trump's private plane with him because I wanted to be with my son because it's that.
fucking fulfilling. You'll have no kids and be happy about it. Is that true for you or not? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And I appreciate you, dear freedom lover, watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, that's the end. Um, one thing I did want to comment on about the Jordan Peterson dialogue with that interviewee or interviewer. One thing that I think is happening for women in their 30s or late 20s that was, I guess, part of that discussion there that he brought into the video is the tension between motherhood, family, career, and status and finance. I've talked to many women, uh, clients of mine, but also just friends mm -hmm. that really do struggle or have struggled with that paradox. Women, you know, in all of our efforts to free women or, or to equalize society and et cetera, it's almost as if we've put them in an impossible situation where, and this is how I think about it, it's, it's if you give up career to have a baby or have a few babies, then there's something wrong with you because you should be pursuing mm -hmm. the ladder and you should be climbing the corporate ladder. Or there's something wrong with you because you want to be a mother. <laughs> right. So you, they can't, you do, yeah, you you're, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And then if you subjugate parenthood till, so you can pursue career and et cetera, mm -hmm. um, then you end up in your late, mid, late thirties, or you end up later in life without kids and a family. Mm -hmm. And many people report how lonely that becomes. Right. And all the, the, the longitudinal studies of health and long, life longevity and happiness, no, it's always about relationships. Right. And so, again, this doesn't mean if you choose not to have children, there's anything wrong. It's not that we're saying that. It's just that it's more complicated than just simply, I want more time for myself, right? Or I get to avoid all these problems. Like, there's a lot more going on. And it's difficult often for us to just uh, allow ourselves to acknowledge how complicated things are yeah. and not to do that lady's inventory, so to speak. But it seems as though she made a simplistic explanation. And maybe that was in the context of the interview and whatever, you know, a lot that I look at all my kids and they're struggling or my friends and they're struggling with their kids and look at me, I have a successful career and I don't yeah. have to deal with that crap. Like, I don't know. And maybe she was trying to argue with Jordan Peterson in that situation and whatever, but it's just, it is more complicated than that. And, um, and maybe we'll get to the JP thing here with his kid and the, the Trump plane thing, which is right. just ridiculous. But anyway, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's like sort of three things, uh, just from that last clip we yeah. showed. So loneliness after 45, um, is what Jordan Peterson said to that, yeah. to the interviewer, um, saying you're good now, but how are you going to be in seven years? I think she said she was 38. Yeah. So that, yeah. So it, it, it relates to that second point of, um, you know, long term, making like long term investments in your life. Mm. Um, and how do you think? And he says, yeah, we're, we're not good in terms of thinking about what might, what should I be doing now for 20 years from now? Like, if you think about financial investments, yeah, um, how yeah. many of us are intuitively good at sticking money away for, you know, 30 years from now, we often don't want to think about it. Many people don't have insurance for that reason, or they don't have the right kind of investments for that kind of reason. Maybe mm -hmm. like un kids are, are that kind of long-term investment. So short-term pain, short-term <laughs> discomfort, but, you know, as Jordan Peterson said, and, you know, by the time you're 50, 60, 70, and, and maybe you really start to age and need help. You're, you're like, thank God I have yeah. kids to visit me in the hospital or in a retirement home or. Mm -hmm. So there's also that. Um, the other thing that that I thought was interesting um, that JP mentioned was kids as being like a, a source of motivation. Mm -hmm. And I've actually felt a bit of this where it's one thing to be like, oh, I want to be good at this just for for myself. But it's actually a, a great source of motivation to say, like, I actually want to be um, gr good. I want to be impressive to my daughter. Yes. I think it's like a good parenting strategy. Like if you're, if your kid thinks you're like this, you know, like, Oh, my, my dad can do things like things become easier. Like you're, you know, I guess I'll use the art. Yeah. Like respect worthy. Like I want to be like a respect. I don't want to ask for respect. I want to earn it and achieve it through like the good things that I am able to do in my life. Yeah. So I find that to be like JP's comment there resonated a bit in terms of how I think about the kinds of different things I'm doing, whether it's, you know, teaching at, at, at a university or, or, or even just being the best tennis player I can be. It sounds ridiculous. It's, it sounds totally meaningless, but like 
the idea of getting the most out of myself like they they add a bit of that they it's not just for me anyway it is for me but i find that sort of runs that fire run, burns out pretty quickly yeah yeah sure but sure. if it's like oh i'm doing this for like my wife and for my right, for my kid right, and right. an upcoming yeah, kid yeah, and yeah and maybe even like for the dog to be like the best person i can be for the dog i'm like oh yeah that's a more sustainable mm. Mm-hmm. It's also more stress inducing mm-hmm. because often if you don't meet the standard that you want to meet, it's like, damn, I'm letting these people down. <laughs> um, it's one thing to let yourself down, which hurts, but to let other people down also. So it's like everything becomes higher stakes yeah. with yeah. kids. Yeah. And I think, I think JP's argument, and I, I think I might agree with this one is I think sometimes higher stakes makes us better. Like it's, yeah. you know, there's a bit more fire behind our decisions. There's a bit more passion there. We take things a bit more seriously in the right way. We're less nonchalant. Um, so I think that's, I think that's, uh, that's, that's a good thing. They ask, like kids are really asking us to step up our game as dads Yeah, and yep. it's crazy hard to always be doing it and we're tired and we didn't sleep enough and we're stressed out about all this stuff and they're not putting their PJs on <laughs> when we ask them to, but, uh, but maybe, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's all, all worth it in the end. Um, yeah, I would just, I'll comment on that yeah. quickly. The, I often think, I think I was sober like 10 months or 11 months before my son was born. Mm. And both of my kids and the structure and having to be responsible to somebody, to my wife, to my kids, actually really helped me in my recovery. I have to wake up. I can't do whatever I want. Um, So it was almost like a form of imposed responsibility. I didn't have to take it, obviously. I could have been a bum and a whatever. But luckily, whatever happened in my life allowed me to take responsibility for it and to be more responsible to my kids and to myself. Ultimately, it was for myself, but it allowed me to be responsible to them. And I I also did find it very helpful, that internal drive, that internal motivation. To your point too about sort of, I think what part of what you're saying was role modeling, right? We're trying to role model what it means to be a respectful human being so that they can internalize that and try to act it out themselves. Mm-hmm. I do think for me, uh, there's a other side of that too, of it forces you to accept your limitations or, or gives you the opportunity to accept your limitations. So sometimes I, I kind of, you know, sometimes I'll look in the mirror and be like, oh, wow. Yeah, I am this 42 <laughs> year old guy who's not in the greatest shape or in decent shape. And I'm a bum, you know, like that, right. that's up to my own standard, but like it does, it gives you the opportunity to accept your inadequacies. I think that's the nice, the best way to say it. And so through parenting, I've also been able to acknowledge my inadequacies and shortcomings and accept myself for who I am. I'm not perfect. Ultimately, I think I'm doing my best and I try to work on the things I'm not great at. So, yeah, just so in terms of like when you say, Mike, when you say accept your inadequacies do you mean accept and like oh i guess i'm just like shitty in this way or is it accept as in recognize and like try to address as best as possible so you said like oh you don't feel like you're in like the greatest shape right now yeah you know before before the camera started to roll and you're telling me all the things you're doing to actually address that so it sounds like because of this sort of family dynamic you have maybe that's one reason of many you can accept the you can accept an inadequacy and then say okay like i'm actually i actually don't want this inadequacy anymore i'm going to try to do the things i need to do is that yeah is that where you're at yeah so yes in terms of the the health stuff because that's generally i can do something about that yeah one inadequacy that I'm sure I could do something about, but it's down on the priority list is sort of being better at preparing meals for my kids. It's just not motive. It's yeah, just, you just it's like, just you know. not something I'm going to do. Okay. My <laughs> wife's great at that. Okay. I'm going to go buy pizza, you know, or right. I'm going to go buy sushi or I'm going to get the takeout stuff. Uh, I try to make healthier decisions. Sure. But certain things like that, you know, right. I'm not great at helping my kids do their homework. So, Either I'm going to have a horrible time of trying to make myself better at getting my kids to do their homework, yeah. or I'm just going to accept that, you know what? Is Okay, so Nikki's yeah. better at dinner. Is she also better at homework? Yeah. So do you think that, let's say um, you had a situation where um, she, you, you had a partner that wasn't good at those things, would you, maybe you don't need to be good at, you don't, you don't need to address that inadequacy because that 
issues addressed. Right. It's being addressed by the the role of the family is to have yeah. different specializations. Like right. You have your own thing to contribute as right. dad. And this that, is actually mom doesn't something we didn't really totally talk about in terms of the video, actually. Yeah. So marriage or partnership and children yeah. does help us address our inadequacies because that's what partnerships are for. Right. Mutually. Literally, yeah. It's ad literally addressing. Yeah. yeah. And so we didn't actually talk about that much, but that's a really good point that you bring up is that's another aspect of getting married or partnering up and having a family is it's teamwork. Not everyone's good at everything. And yeah. I think my wife and I have found a really good balance for the most part. Right. She's better at managing money than I am. She's better at being organized with camp and, you know, activities and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. that goes back to the, you know, that is a bit of an inadequacy of mine, and I'm just not going to spend that much time dealing with it. And right. that's okay. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and you don't have – I mean, that's, you're right. That's the, that's the point of the relationship. Uh, the other thing I wanted yeah. to ask about is um, to live a socially healthy life, right? To live the kind of life that JP is mentioning here. Mm -hmm. you need to, it needs to be acts of service. It needs to be for someone else. It needs to be, you know, that, those kinds of things. Um, I'm just wondering, can – is there something unique about parenting and family that can't be replicated in like volunteering at the humane society right. or being, you know, an, in, you know, an AA mentor, um, or just being really passionate about your job. If you're a, if you work with students, if you work with those struggling mm -hmm. with mental health, maybe, maybe that's enough. Um, what would, a critic of JP may say, yeah, you're just saying, you know, the only way to live a socially healthy life and act in a, a life of service and responsibilities through having kids. But maybe there's like 15, 20, 30, 100,000 other ways to live that kind of life. And it doesn't need to be with kids with all the other sort of challenges that come with that. Do you, where do you stand on that? Do you think you can, is something, is there something unique about parenting and having kids in terms of the service, social, sort of dynamics of it um, or can that just be addressed through like good volunteer work and, you know, working with the homeless and, and, and things like that, just being an otherwise good person, but you know, not having, not being a parent. Yeah. No, I don't know. I do think there's probably something unique about being a parent that you probably can't get elsewhere, but, but the, the sense of like service and motivation and being a part of and contributing to the well being of others yeah, you definitely do not need to be a parent to do that, I think. Like, and not all people, there's there's many, many reasons why somebody may not be in a position to be a parent. Yeah. And and that is often no fault of their own, yeah. right? And like there's all kinds of circumstances that contribute to that. So, yeah. you know, we haven't maybe maybe we have or haven't, but just that this isn't a, a moral failing or anything like that. Right. Or like if you choose not to, for whatever reason, doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean you can't live a fulfilling life. Yeah. I think we covered that a bit, but in maybe in uh, summary again. Um, but what we, what we are saying matters a lot is that you do not live a hedonic life, right? Where it's all about you. Right. And so whether it's, it's about having kids and family and et cetera, or whether it's about, being of service to humanity that's what matters it's this it's the being connected in relationship of service taking responsibility and finding meaning in that and and being yeah. motivated by that yeah. and so yeah i don't think you know you do not have to be a parent for that certainly not right a lot of the religious traditions a lot of the priests or the even the monks or whatever the buddhist monks are celibate right they're right not yeah. Parent. yeah yeah and and they're of great service to humanity so right yeah so, so yeah i wonder about the, some of the unique things that family and parenting bring like it's a day in day out grind yeah like so i'll just an analogy like i used to before i started like working with shelter dogs i would just go to the humane society society and volunteer for like three hours a week and that was like a big deal for me. That was like my first major sort of volunteering thing. I was younger, all that, all this. Thing. But then I like then, but like I was dipping in and out. Like there was no real mm -hmm. life changing commitment. So like the service was three hours, took a few dogs out, tried not to get bit, got them <laughs> back in and went back to my life. And then like the next Tuesday, you know, I was there for like nine to 12. I just repeated. And then I decided to foster one of these dogs. Mm -hmm. This was my first dog. And I was like, oh, this is okay. So it's, it's, every, it's, you have a dog 
day in, day out, every single day, restructuring your life around this thing that, you know, needs some guidance, maybe is trying to hurt you, right? Um, at some point, right? <laughs> Depending on where the dog is at, um, or where, or where you're at. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Um, so it was, it was like a level up of, of consistent commitment. Yes. Something like that, that in a way that weekly yeah. volunteering didn't get to me. It's sure, sort of like sure. I had tapped that out and I was like, yeah. Oh, I need more because it wasn't filling my bucket in the same way. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to get one dog. I was like, okay, one's not enough. I need three. I had three <laughs> big dogs at one point and I just one left. Um, but like, yeah, it seems to be something unique about the living with the, the people you're serving yeah. to be distinct than as opposed to, you know, the, the beautiful work of going to a homeless shelter or going to the, going to a, an animal shelter or whatever. Um, there's something different about bringing that, that recipient of your support home with you. Sure. And then living with it, whether that's a kid, a dog, whatever. Um, yes. So maybe that's something unique is that it's a day, it's a lifelong, hopefully relationship. Mm, yeah. As yeah. opposed to a few months here and there. And then, yeah. you know, it's more life changing, which maybe makes the service more powerful and more impactful on one's life. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. Yeah. Um, Maybe just the last comment on his little trope with Donald yep. Trump, that whole like, I oh, yeah. love my kid so much, I gave up a trip on Donald Trump's private chat. <laughs> like, it just it's probably a lot of reasons to give up that trip. But, yeah, probably. Okay. But a lot like, of other reasons. Too, yeah, it just, yeah, it just seems so silly kind of at the end. But whatever. Again, JP, we're not here to criticize his morality or his like or again, his politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're trying to stay away from that. Yeah. And I'm sure we came across maybe a little bit judgy in some ways. So if we did, you know, that's not the intention. Yeah, we are flawed yeah. human beings. We're trying to do our best. And um, you know, maybe one could even argue, well, maybe there's there's a codependency with you and your son. Like why <laughs> didn't you go on the private jet? Like that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Maybe there maybe you got some codependency issues there, you know? Right. Anyway, I, I say that in, in humor, but um that's the last thing I guess I would say about all this. Yeah. Um I had a three I mean we're going yeah, on here, but I it. but this is you know, this is our chance. To, yeah. <laughs> um, chance. So just in the okay, so yeah, this this goes back to so going back to so earlier in this video, you'll see early, you know, earlier in this discussion, we talked about like the science behind or some of the research linking unhappiness yep. with having kids, right? Yes. And like what's the quality of that? And I think we've briefly flagged this issue of of confounding. Like, how do we know that it's actually the kids themselves? And the rearing of them doing the causal work on an individual's unhappiness as right. opposed to a whole host of other things. Right. And one thing I really do wonder about, and this is this is a, like a hot topic in sort of like in like Western culture, which is like, how do you raise your kids? So like the American approach is very different from the French approach and the larger European approach, which tends to be a bit more a bit more hands off, a bit more sort of like benign neglect <laughs> kind of approach. Right. Um in America, maybe in Canada, you see this as well, where, you know, an increasingly Americanized society, there's like often like a very much like sort of helicoptering or lawn, lawn mowing your, your kids, like paving the way for their success, not wanting them to ever feel anxiety or concern and really sort of like, you know, protecting them. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there, if really what's doing the work in explaining happiness and unhappiness is it's not, it's not the having the kids and being a parent. It's actually the parent parental style we adopt that has a huge effect on our happiness. So if we're if we adopt, you know, one approach over another, maybe that might make us more unhappy than the, you know, than 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 otherwise we would be. So if we were if we really, you know, always accommodated our child and and made them really dependent on us or, you know, or were really mean to them all the time and very, you know, overly disciplinarian in in nature, then maybe that would lead to a really or relationship with them for a whole host of reasons. But if we did other things that are more associated with good parenting and good attachment and healthy levels of independence and et cetera, et cetera, maybe then what JP is talking about kicks in. So maybe it's not the having kids thing, but it's rather the approach we take to rearing them. And then I would want to know what parents, so what parental style is most closely related to parental happiness? Right. That would be would, the study would that it, I would want to see. But wouldn't it maybe also it exists. be? I don't know. Wouldn't it also be? What are the characteristics of the parents surveyed in the study? Yes. Yes. Right? There's a whole. Yeah. They may be coming in with mental uh, mental health struggles. 
sure or they or maybe like, it's a very yeah. i do know there's a challenge with research psychological research with bias of the respondents to these surveys yeah. and i know they try to adjust for that right and they tried but with, with anything that's like survey based yeah you're going to get people who lie intentionally lie unintentionally don't remember um right don't yeah. report things maybe the researcher themselves doesn't ask a question about something that actually might really matter so yeah it's 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 very hard work to do so it's one it's an easy it's easy to criticize this kind of work but it's very hard to do if you're actually yeah, the researcher yeah, doing yeah, it yeah. it's very very difficult so that's my big that's that's sort of my big question i'm i'm thinking a lot about that now and i i wonder what like google scholar would find for me if i did a bit of a yeah. a deep dive into <laughs> parental style and parental happiness like mm. sorry re yeah rearing style or rearing approach of yeah, parental yeah. happiness like yeah, are european french parents happier than the modal canadian or mm. american parent just because of the the approach they take does it have to do with a climate right is this like a u.s story is this a you know a regional story in the is it like cold states where like you don't go aside as much maybe that's where the kid you know yeah. like all these things are you know when you when you're locking this inside with your kids Maybe we should have re read the studies he was quote, he was referencing. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's a, yeah, it's just like it raises questions about yeah. yeah, like what what's built into these studies and and identifying for those who are interested, like identifying omitted variables. So it's called like omitted variable and right, uh, right. bias. Like there's a factor that's not being integrated right. into the statistical statistical study, and then it's exaggerating the effect of of other other variables that are included, and then not giving you an accurate result. Of what's actually going on in the mm -hmm. quote unquote real world so mm -hmm. so that's something i i thought about yeah, um the other thing is is the idea of paying it forward so those who are advocating not having kids are were once kids and live and exist so don't they have don't do we have a responsibility to you know if someone said oh i'm so grateful for existing don't we then have a responsibility yeah. to providing that opportunity for some for something else like if we love our lives mm. and we want to leave it to Chelsea Handler really loves her life. Why, why is she depriving that of some, someone yeah, else yeah, 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 by yeah. having a kid? So yeah. I don't know. That's just something to, to factor That's in. That's very insightful. Yeah. Um, and then grandparents and kids. So if you don't have, if Chelsea Handler doesn't have, she might be happier, but what happiness is she depriving of her parents um, who might really have a great time with grandchildren? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of these things need to be like, you know, integrated into one's analysis. So yes, right, so you're, right, you're taking right. away from your individual time, but what are you adding to, the kids' happiness, the your own parents' happiness as grandparents, is the overall happiness effect net yes. larger yes. or smaller? So right. yeah, it may it may diminish some of your own happiness, however you define it, but maybe on the whole, there's all these people around you that that benefit, which can actually then in, you know in turn increase your own happiness yeah. when you see your grandparent when you see your own parents, you know, really engaged with your grandkids, um, when you see your kids doing well. Um, so it's a complicated, like mathematical problem. Like, <laughs> sure. How do you measure yeah. the happiness or unhappiness well, generated from to that point? I know my rearing. parents love having grandkids. Yeah, yeah. And that's and, a huge source of yeah, enjoyment. For yeah, them. yeah. And connection, and and you know, when my parents get old and start dying, it will be lovely to have grandkids around to help. It will yeah. be great for me too. Like, or for anyway. So it does that. I'm, I'm glad you brought up that perspective because it there it is a multi-generational thing yeah and we're all in this together right and and there's a difference between my life worked out in such a way that i can't have kids yeah right or it's just not a viable option for me versus it is an option for me and i'm choosing not to to pursue my hedonic pleasures yeah yes yes totally yeah, we're talking about sort of like two different kinds of people. Those who yes. want it but maybe can't for a variety of right, reasons. Those right. who actively choose but can but actively yeah. choose not to. Yeah. The other thing, the last thing is, um, and this builds on something you mentioned about like how do you learn about the best way to live? And I think maybe we mentioned this in in sort of the first half of this of this discussion, like the wisdom you derive from intergenerational yeah. living. Yeah. Like yeah. I I had I had really nice relationships with all my grandparents, and I think that was so like useful for me, like to see like how does an old person think mm. what do they worry about how do they reflect on their life what insight do they have for someone like me who has no mm. basis of aging or at least when i was close with them yeah um and then also for us as we get older having kids to help us stay young right like mm. take us like because they're so they just want to play and cause trouble all day and just be kids and you know they remind us to maybe you know for us to be kids ourselves 
So the wisdom generated from intergenerational living is also super important. If you just hang out with a bunch of 40 year olds then yeah. oh my God, I mean, that's important, but it's, <laughs> it might not be the optimal yeah. strategy if you can hang out with a bunch of 40 year olds and then some 80 year olds and then some six year olds and some two year olds and everything in between. I think it's, I think it's probably a good thing to get different people at different stages of life so you can calibrate and learn accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that. Yeah. I think I am. I'm tapped out psychologically. That's it. Okay. Well, thank you. No, I, no, that was beautiful. No, (laughs) thank you everybody for listening. I hope you found that helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much. All that like comment, subscribe, share stuff. Please do that. And, uh, until next time, take care. Thank you. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.